right, welcome to episode number eight of Mike Up or Shut Up. I'm Chris, here with Angie, Bodie, and Reagan, as well as Reese. We'll just go ahead and give him a shout out real quick. Welcome back, everybody. It's uh, October 1st, our favorite time of the year, Halloween, right? Spooky season. <laughs> Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be recommending horror movies this entire month. So every movie recommendation will be a horror movie. So. In the spirit of Halloween, if you don't mind, I'll tell you a of course story not. Of course about not. the time when I was scared out of my drawers. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a good one. This is a good story. So I was probably, I don't know, 27 years old, maybe somewhere in that neighborhood. Young, Much younger man than I am now. I was working for the local police department. And I had a luxury of having a short shift one night. Had to, I got off early. And so when I got off my shift, I texted my wife and I said, I'm on the way home. I got an early out tonight. I'm, you know, we watch a movie or something. She said, oh, that sounds great. So I come home and it's pitch black, it's midnight. And I come home, I'm in my police unit, the, the, the police cruiser, right? Full uniform, gun on my side. I'm walking towards the door of the house, and it's under the carport where the door is, so there's a couple cars parked in the carport. And as I'm walking towards the door, my wife jumps out from behind a car and goes, boom! And when I tell you that I came clean out of my boots and screamed like a woman. <laughs> like the neighbors probably thought it was one of the horror movie screams. It was like a girl I was screaming. And I said, oh, I was so angry because, and then I, you know, I tried to play it off and say, are you crazy? I got a gun. I could have shot you. But there was nothing. There was nothing in my mind that was thinking, grab this gun. You understand me? <laughs> Everything in my mind was thinking, Turn around and run. So, yeah, that was one of the rare times I apologized to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she scared the drawers out of me. That was interesting. I think it's a Rogers thing because Chris loves to scare people. Oh, I live for it. No, yeah. I live for it. Yeah, that's why it's my favorite time of year. But what I can't get is I love to scare people, but there's no way in hell I would have scared a person with a gun. You're absolutely right. I see a person with a gun, I think this is a good time to scare the shit out of this person. Right. But then again, maybe she just knew you were a bitch. I don't yeah. know. Well, I felt like one. I'm not even going to lie. And I, I don't mind telling that story because yeah. I sure felt like one. Yeah, maybe she was like, this punk ass bitch ain't going to shoot mm. nothing. Wow. And you don't. And, He's bigger than you. And you don't have to worry because at no point in that fraction of a second where I was terrified did I think, I have a gun. I can handle this. <laughs> no point in time did I think that. You understand me? Heard. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, they say fight or flight. Right. Fight never entered my mind. <laughs> 100% it was all full flight. on flight. Huh? Yeah, I was 100% ass and elbows. You understand? <laughs> the other way. Exactly what you want in your average police officer. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, I, I, and it's funny that you say that because I, I learned in the law enforcement business that fear is what keeps you alive. Right. Any law enforcement officer that tells you that they're not scared at some point in their career, of they're lying. Of course. And if they are telling the truth, then they're stupid because fear is what keeps you alive. Right. But, yeah, that was my Halloween scare story, you know. It, <laughs> I, and I, I think it may have even been close to Halloween when she did that, too. Nice. Because there was, like, some spooky lights. The jack-o'-lantern may have been on the front steps, you right. know. I don't know. It just was something about that moment that she terrified me. <laughs> Yeah, you were banned from scaring people, weren't you? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, well, that's yeah. I can tell that story. So, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, stepping on my story. So uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, so when I lived in Virginia, my aunt <clears throat> lived in this little subdivision, Toano, you know, and uh, so of course it was you know small area. All the, all the kids in the entire area would come in to to uh, trick or treat at your house, you know, on Halloween because I mean it was a limited amount of houses you could go to, so. It did hit everybody's house basically. Well, my aunt, the first year that I was I lived in Virginia, <clears throat> uh, her driveway had two a tree on each side of it, and the trees were just right. One you could actually stand up against 
the trunk of one of the trees and the branches grew in such a way that you couldn't be seen, you know, when it was dark. So I was like, perfect. So, you know, I got my costume, my mask on and everything, standing up against the trunk. I was catching them coming in to get the candy and coming back out to get the candy because they couldn't see me either way. I would come out there and, I'm, and it, age did not matter. Oh, you, you were know? scaring little kids. Oh, little kids. I don't give a shit because <laughs> see, here's the thing. It's a trade-off. You get free candy. But the penalty for that is you got to get scared. That's how I look at it. But it's trick or treat. Right. Not yeah, trick it's not and just treat. walk up and treat. No, 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 no. You have to be scared on Halloween. That is a rule. Yeah. You get free candy, sure. you have to be scared. That's just simple as that. Trick or treat is for the, uh, when you at the house. I'm talking about in the driveway. That's a whole different situation. So here I am, <laughs> jumping out, kids fucking screaming <laughs> their heads <laughs> off. Some of them breaking down in tears. You know, that was a bonus. <laughs> so, so I terrorize them all night long. Next year, oh, Halloween comes around. Yeah, all right, round two, right? Stand up against a tree. Kids, kids are actually standing in the street, going, "Don't go to that house." <laughs> so, so no, not not a single trick or treat to walk down that driveway. So my aunt was like, "You can't do this anymore." So I was like, "I was like, this is bullshit." <laughs> but I didn't do it anymore. You How old were you at though. this time? Oh, I was in my twenties. <laughs> I, I just picture a little seven-year-old Transformer kid dressed up in his little costume and just carrying his mask back to mom crying because of <laughs> what a 20-year-old man did to him, you know? I'm like, I would love to know how many babies he made. No, 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 like I did not scare him. babies. You I said didn't scare any babies. age. Well, if they were able to walk, I scared them. <laughs> I'm pretty oh that. If they were being carried. So uh, two. Yeah. Two was the <laughs> Two and up, yeah, two and up, yeah. <laughs> two and up, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a monster. I cut it <laughs> right, off at two. Right. <laughs> he said I'm not a monster. <laughs> well, this house is known for me scaring people. I love to scare my kids. I love to scare anybody that comes in this house. And we used to have a cat. It was 25 pounds. It was a large breed, so it wasn't like just big. It was large. No, no, it was a fat no, no, cat. That, no, that cat, it's no, no, no. Was. That cat was not and fat. That cat Chris. was just ginormous. Yeah, yeah that was a right, big right. cat. That was a big cat. So the cat used to scare people if they come <laughs> over and go to the bathroom upstairs. They didn't know the cat was locked in there. <laughs> they had a hard time getting out. <laughs> uh, well, one night, my nephew came and he slept over and uh, everybody knew you didn't mess with this cat. He was not a friendly cat. Facts. So, my nephew went to the bathroom downstairs and he opens the door, and the cat is like three feet in front of the door. So my nephew is terrified to come out of the bathroom. And he's talking to the cat. Cappy, just go away. Go away, Cappy. <laughs> and he doesn't know that I'm right there on the side trying not to laugh. So I decide to put the kid out of his misery. So I jumped and yelled, boo, and scared the <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> Cappy is the cat's name, by the way. Right, yeah, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Chris yeah. isn't allowed to scare me anymore. Yeah, she's afraid I'll give her a heart attack, which is fair. He literally, fair. Made, he scared me so bad one time, with him and, you know, your cousin. Can't, scared you me so bad name. one time that I literally sat down on the steps at our old house when we first got married and just cried. I just, a, I cried a, for a good 30 minutes. That's a proud day for me. 30 minutes? I, it was See, so when bad. when she scared the drawers off of me, I was good in 30 seconds. <laughs> I, I just don't understand the, the sentiment or the emotion of being scared for 30 minutes. I think it's after they terrified me, they just kept on, like, just fuck, fucking with me. It was just wow. it was just bad. Your pride was probably hurt. That's yeah, that's probably, probably No, I was mad. Because yeah. mine was. Yeah. My pride was hurt. <laughs> I was supposed to be this big man, and she turned me into a... Victoria's Secret model real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, fun fact, uh, the two of you, Reagan and Bodie, were married and lived in a haunted house. Yes, an old right. antebellum home right. that they, there's there's actually magazine articles. It's called Adelaide Plantation. And we lived in that home when we were married. We were actually married in that home. There is a grave site in the, on the property in the yard where the original owner of the home was buried and there's been documented noises and ghost hauntings and all kinds of different uh apparitiony type sightings and things in that house so 
It was the owner of the house. I thought it was a little girl that was buried in the yard. Somebody that lived there. I, I, I'm almost point. positive it, it was it's a not little a girl. Little I looked, girl. It's at least a teenager. Oh, okay. I could have swore when, when I found out you lived in our house. I looked it up. I want to say it was a little girl, but maybe I'm wrong. No, you could but, be right. I don't know the actual age of the person. I thought yeah. it was the original owner. Okay, well, either way, a dead person. Yeah, it, yeah. They're, they're and the they, they were buried in the yard there. So, so yeah. So what happened? Fun story about that. Uh, I think y'all were both working at the casino, uh, casino at the time. Yep. So you were working overnight, mm-hmm. and uh, me and uh, our sister Stacy had invited a bunch of people uh, from that we went to college with to come spend the weekend or whatever. And uh, so we were all over there. And uh, so I, you know, I don't believe in ghosts. You know, I do not believe in ghosts. So I was he like, believes in aliens. So some, right. <laughs> well, that's because aliens are real. All right. And no ghosts. ghosts are not, no. Aliens. Right. So. <clears throat> You gotta draw the line somewhere. Right. So two-year-olds, uh, right. Yeah, no, well, uh, two two year olds, yep. I guarantee you those two year olds believe in ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <I bet>. yeah. <laughs> so so uh when I found out that you lived in a haunted house, I was very excited about it. I invited everybody over, like we we're gonna hold a seance while Reagan and Bodie are at work. We're gonna hold a seance at the house. So I I knew somebody who knew somebody who had was like supposedly like a psychic or whatever. So I called them and I said, uh I don't want to spend any money. I don't want to buy a Ouija board. So what do I need to do to like make a Ouija board? So she, you know, she, this woman gives me some instructions. She's like, oh yeah, it's even better that you don't buy it. If you make it yourself, you have a stronger connection to the, you know. No, so I was like, okay, God. great. So I did everything she said. You know, I drew the letters here and there, put the yes and no in the corner, all, all the shit. And uh, she said, you just have to use a uh, upturned glass as the planchette. So I was like, perfect. So Stacy and I, because Stacy also does not believe in ghosts. So she and I made a deal. I said, look, I swear to you that when we use this Ouija board, I will not move the glass, you know, on my own. I won't, I won't pretend like it's a ghost moving. I will not move it. And she said, I won't either. So I said, great. So if either one of us are holding that glass that starts moving, we're talking to a ghost. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. Great. So, of course, it takes two people to do it. You're supposed to have two people holding it. So... I remember I, I went first with this other girl. <clears throat> I think it was, her name was Jennifer. So she puts her hands on a glass. Put her hand, so when I put my hands on a glass, I pressed down as hard as I could without making it seem like I was I was pressing down. <laughs> so we, had, you know, so I can't remember to ask some question. Well, as soon as they asked the spirit a question, I could feel her like gently tugging on the glass, <laughs> trying to make it move. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I got you. So so we asked a few questions. Nothing happened. And I was like, okay, somebody else take a turn. So, of course, I get up. The next people take a turn. The, the glass oh, is moving all over. Yeah, the yeah. ghost is just so talkative, right? That's the question. So, so then, so then, so then, okay, so let's let somebody else take a turn. So then Stacy gets in on it. So Stacy sits down. Start, start asking questions. The glass doesn't move, right? Of course. Again, we switch off. It's not me or Stacy. Glass. Any questions you want to answer, the ghost has the answer, right? So I'm like, this, yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is a bunch of crap. So after, you know, after we did, I was like, okay, we're gonna kick this up a notch. We're going out and we're gonna hold the seance on the grave. So of course we bring some candles. We go sit out there, sitting on the, and same thing happens. Sitting on the damn grave. Me and Stacy involved, you know. So Stacy got bored with it. She left. A couple other people, yeah, this is no good. So they all they went back in the house. I don't know, there was like four of us that stayed out. So of course, every time I sat there, nothing. So there was a uh, there was like a I don't know a, a light in your yard that was on the ground that would shine upwards. Okay. <clears throat> so that's important. I had to throw it out there. So that's important. So all right, so we're out there. On the grave, I'm holding it. Nothing's happening again. I'm like, God damn it, we got to kick this up a notch because nothing's happening. So we start going, uh, show yourself. Instead of asking questions, we start saying to the ghost, you know, reveal yourself. You know, show us where you are. You know, all this kind of stuff. So we say that a few times. And that where that light is shining up, there is a black silhouette of a human being standing there. And I think to myself, I have made a terrible mistake. <laughs> and it was goddamn Stacy coming out of the house to see <laughs> <laughs> to see what we were doing. <laughs> so I believed in a ghost for about 10 seconds. <laughs> right. And it was at those 10 seconds, at this moment, is where he knew he screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what was I thinking? <laughs> so to uh, finalize the story, uh, there's no such thing as ghosts. Yeah, that's how yeah, you find out. That's how I find out. Yep, yeah, that's how I find out. So we've, we've determined now that 
Chris, the all-knowing, all-powerful master of Mike Upashoto, has <laughs> fully believed and puts all of his faith and, and energy into aliens on Earth and UFOs and Little Green Men, but does not, under any circumstance, believe in ghosts or apparitions of any kind. Uh, that's correct. Right. You've got Except it for the ones in Mexico. We've nailed it. What? What the hell are you talking the about? aliens in Mexico? No, no, I do not the believe in those. No, no, I do not believe in those aliens. Yeah, no, I do not believe in those aliens. Yeah, yeah. but wasn't the guy no. in on it that you said testified in front of Congress? Why would Grush, a guy that Grush, you Grush. said... No, I don't know nothing about Gr Grush, Grush being involved. I don't know nothing about Grush being involved. The guy... Okay, what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are not keeping up with alien news, is uh, <laughs> just a couple of days ago... That's, that's everybody but you, by the way. Oh! <laughs> and his best friend Ashton. That hurts. That hurts. Okay. So, uh, in, at Mexican Congress, whatever you call I don't know what you call Mexican Congress, La Congress, I don't know what the fuck you call <laughs> El Congreso. <laughs> I think, you, know, you know what, I think that's it. I think that is it. So... Some guy revealed he he revealed these two mummified alien bodies. Supposedly, it had been like a thousand years old or something like that. So you know that you can see it in this little glass case, whatever. These two little tiny, weird looking, weird shaped head mummies with duck lips. Yeah, yeah, they're very yeah they're very both... very strange looking. So supposedly they were you know mummified alien remains. Which I the second I saw them, I knew immediately it's horseshit. Now they actually might be real mummies. But they're not alien mummies. I have never believed in that. I never said those alien mummies were real. I don't know why y'all bringing that up. I never said those alien mummies were real. Well, in order for them to be real mummies, wouldn't they have to be real tissue? Yes. Okay, so is that tissue human? They're running tests. They're, they, I'm there's not no, no, the no, no, no. I'm not asking the well, test. First of, all, first of all, first of all, if those. If those mummies were in fact alien mummies, okay, if they were extraterrestrial bodies in mummified form, that shit, after a couple of days, that shit would have been all over the news because there's no, if, first of all, this is how you know for sure whether or not they're alien bodies. One, you take tissue samples and you see if they're aliens or the people who presented the alien bodies don't let you take tissue samples because if they don't let you take tissue samples, they're not aliens. Right. But since it's been a couple of days and nobody said anything at all whatsoever, I'm fairly certain they're not alien bodies. Okay. I'm just trying to qualify the statement that you made where you said they might actually be mummies. Yeah. Well, when I said mummies, right, mummies. they could be human mummies. Human mummies. So, does so that look was, like anything human No, to that you? doesn't look well, like a human. It was but infant elephant man. They, they could have... People were saying they could have altered the shape of the mummies or something. Apparently, they did that sometimes. I, I don't know. But, yeah, they're not aliens. I promise <laughs> okay. you, they're not aliens. Okay. You always claim that I'm wearing a tinfoil hat and I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking writing shit on the walls and stuff. Yeah, but, no, yeah, I, that is yeah, yeah. because I believe there is life. I'm going to get a black light and go to your house. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of hieroglyphics. Number 23 all over the walls. In, in, in blood and, no. and snot all no. over the walls. I believe that there is life on other planets. I don't know why that makes me crazy. No, no, it doesn't make you crazy. Life on other planets doesn't constitute life on other planets being on this planet. No, it doesn't. You understand no, and that's right. That's right. That's There's correct. A massive difference. That is correct. Because I also believe that there is life on other planets. But I just don't believe that that life has made it to this planet. That's fair. That's fair. I used to say the same thing. However, recently, you know, some of those videos released by the military and all that made me start to question if that's even possible. That it, maybe it is possible that they have the technology that allows them to travel. Through space, long distances that we don't have. I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. we have the technology to travel through space. Right. We just don't have the technology to travel farther than you know our own galaxy. Right. Well, I mean, even within our own galaxy, we can't travel sure. from one side of the galaxy to the well, other. No, we got the you Hubble know, and we got some other things that yeah, but, are pretty pretty far out there. Right yeah, but now. yeah, but yeah, we're not going back well, and forth. They're not going back and forth. No, I mean, no, we're not. You know, vacationing. Yeah. Right. You know, on Neptune. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. However, you know. Uh, alien civilization could be so far advanced that they could have some sort of technology we can't even fathom. Of course. You know, Absolutely. I mean, if you brought a motorcycle, for example, back to caveman times and showed it to an that, that, that I mean, it'd they be so far, alien. yeah, so far beyond their comprehension, I mean, so the same technology could exist for them. Well, maybe, maybe what we have is not alien, maybe it's time travel. 
Well, maybe. I don't know. But I didn't make sense. I don't believe in time travel, ladies and gentlemen. I I want to go back to the ghost thing. Yes. I just want to put on the record that if I died before you, Chris, I am going to haunt you. (laughs) No. Without you believing me. No. Well, you know, uh, interestingly, so Houdini and his wife made that arrangement that um, if he died, they they had a secret code word that they never told to anyone else. And so uh, it was because if when one of them died, the other one would hold a seance, and then if the medium would say that word or write that word down or whatever, then there would be proof that they were contacting him from the other side. Well, of course, Houdini did die before his wife, and they, she held many seances, and that word was never said. Well, I'm just going to scare the shit out of you every time I visit you. Go for Chris. Don't go for Chris. No, you literally have answer. to wear a diaper because she will scare the feces right out of you. <laughs> he likes being scared. I don't. He ain't going to like it when he don't believe in ghosts. And but it is, it is October, the month of Halloween. That's what it's all about? No, that's what it's all This is my favorite time of year. Yeah. Yep, I love it. Yeah, because you like to scare two-year-olds. <laughs> well, hey. It's his favorite holiday. <laughs> it is. It's part of the I'm not the it? one who invented the holiday. Don't hate the player. Hate the, the game. You know what? I, I don't know. Oh, did he just say, I don't know? Did Chris just say those three words? I don't believe yeah, it. Pretty pagans, sure pagans that's, a, that's a pretty good answer. Pagans? Yeah, pagans. Okay, they also created that. Christmas. Because I don't like, I don't know. Coming from out of your oh. mouth. Oh. I don't like it. Well, from now on, uh, present the questions ahead of time, and I'll look up, <laughs> I'll Google the answer. But if Google knows, it doesn't mean that Chris knows. Well, that's true. We already discussed the whole Google right. knowledge thing. Right, we did. Yeah. We did. We did talk about that. Google's my best mm. friend. What do we got today, man? What do we got today besides being scared out of our drawers and stuff? All right. right. So, uh, we got on the board here. Ooh, we can gonna... do this first. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, go ahead and knock okay. that out. I think you've had this, Reese. I made it for y'all. Oh, no, I did. I brought a whole container. So, every year in fall, I make something called the Halloween mix. Ah, uh, yes. You, you don't sound excited. I really don't like a lot of the stuff that's in it. Really? Really? <laughs> it's Chris's favorite thing. Well, I mean, that's great for y'all. Of course. Yeah, I don't Everybody's got their thing. Sure. Um, so it's a Halloween mix that you make and you mix all together. Um, I used to make it in like trolls and give it to people as gifts and everything. So it has milk duds, Reese's Pieces, honey roasted peanuts, pretzel sticks, Muddy Buddies, the pumpkin uh, candy corn, what? honey I- teddy grams. It was candy corn. It's well, not yeah, okay. cream. Okay. Well, I prefer the. And then honey though. checks, and then caramel pieces, like the caramel bits right. that you can use to bake and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Well, he just said you used the wrong kind of pumpkin. Yeah, I prefer so the I it. prefer the pumpkin <laughs> mallow creams in my mix, not the not right. the. Uh, okay. You know what I'm talking First about? of all, he doesn't make it, so he don't know right. what the f he's talking well, about. Well, I prefer the pumpkin um, mallow creams. So you mix it up all together, and you put it in like this big container. And then Chris can eat it in like a week. Oh my God, it's amazing! Yeah, I can't have it anymore. There's nothing better than eating that mix and watching a movie. I only have one question: What is a muddy buddy? Oh, it's a Chex muddy buddy. It's the one that has like the peanut butter inside of it with the oh, we'll powdered bring sugar some. on that too. No, no, it's the one that has the peanut butter inside of it. It's That's the your you know definition of muddy no, buddy. it's the Chex well, mix in a white in a, the one that has the peanut butter inside. Of it. <laughs> yes, it's a, in a white bag. Uh-huh. It's a Chex mix. Okay, so. So it, it's like a little square of mm-hmm. chicks. And it has peanut butter, and it's tossed with peanut butter and chocolate, and then it has white powdered sugar on the outside of it. Yeah, it almost looks like it almost looks like it's sprinkled with something on the outside. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've never I've heard seen, of it. It's I've delicious. It. It's delicious. I mean, that, we'll bring some over because you'll like it. Have you ever like had puppy chow? Like no, I've eaten the crap that she's Did talking about. Did you just about. say puppy <laughs> chow? Well, yeah, it's... Yeah, that, I just caught that as well. <laughs> puppy chow. What is... Some relative of y'all's used to make it at Christmas, because uh, it's oh. and it's it's the checks that's got the peanut butter, and then they toss it in the Ziploc bag with powdered sugar, and it's dipped in chocolate. I've had it at a Christmas thing for y'all. That actually strikes a memory with me. But I, de- I, can't, I, I don't can't remember them calling it puppy chow, but I do remember <laughs> eating it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember ever having anything called puppy chow presented to me. Yeah, I don't remember them calling it that, but they may very well have. And yeah, I just, like I said, it strikes something in my yep. memory, but I can't pull it out. It was probably a Rogers thing that y'all were invited to. Yeah, oh, jealousy, invited to jealousy. Oh, jealousy. Hey, no, listen. No, no, not jealousy Some all. people are popular, some people aren't. I, it is what it is. That, what you going to do? What you going to do? So, okay. So, we're going to, uh, let's uh, switch over to something a little more serious for a minute. Uh-oh. <clears throat> oh, can serious. you believe? Can you believe? I we were already pretty more serious than ghosts? Right. And aliens. Afterlife and all that. 
So I'm going to do a quick skit, which will demonstrate every job ever. Oh, my God. Okay? And then oh we're going to talk God. about it. We're going to talk about jobs. Okay. All right? We're going to do a one-man skit. I'm going to do a one-man, one-man skit. skit. A one-man skit. He's a one-man show. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Turn up the volume. <laughs> Put the speed on 1.5. <laughs> and let's get it. <laughs> you know I'm going to blow this one. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so imagine I'm an employee. I'm going to do the voice of an employee, and I'm going to do the, I'm do the boss. So there's a conversation so, with an employee and the boss. All so right? just for just for posterity, uh-huh. I want you to say the word hello in the voice no, of no, an employee. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Well, I'm, okay, let me just Well, I need to know which no. one sounds You'll know which one it is. Oh, you'll trust me. You'll know. No, I'm not going to okay, do, okay. do a crazy voice. Okay. So I'm just going to do it by referring to each other. All okay. right, so. Boss, I need to talk to you. Uh, I'm working here all the time. You don't like it when I call out. I can't take vacation. I have to work overtime. And I feel like I'm missing out on my personal life. My kid had a birthday the other day and I missed it. He had a baseball game. I missed it. I just feel like this job is taken away from my own personal life. Well, employee, you know how it is at this company. Business needs over personal needs. Well, unless you're a supervisor or manager. And then we get to take care of our personal stuff. But regular employees, business needs over personal needs. That's just how it is here. Well, boss, the other problem is uh, even with me doing all this work, I still can't afford to pay for things that I would like to enjoy in my life or sometimes even just to pay my bills. Well, employee, you get fucked. (laughs) Okay, boss. Well, I guess I quit. What, employee? I cannot believe this. I cannot believe you're going to do me like this. And scene. <laughs> is that not correct? Is that not a uh, correct view of how every job you've ever had goes? Huh? Mine favorite part was the get fucked part. That was yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Right. Accurate though, right? I don't know. Well, except for the I quit part, a lot of people. Yeah, can't right. To well, quit. yeah. Yeah, not but a lot of people are doing the I quit. And your the, brother. The the quit in the most epic way when he worked at a casino in Lake Charles. It was. It's still talking. So about my manager, day. he didn't like me. I, I know that's hard to believe. Okay. <laughs> Shocker. I, no, I know. Shocker. He right? he did not care for Who me. Who in their right mind does not like right. Chris Rogers? That's what I want. To right. Maybe he was an alien. He could have been. He, he could have been, been possessed by a ghost too. <laughs> he could have been. But that's what uh, he's even personable to species that we don't even know about. <laughs> but he doesn't like people at all. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. But I do not like they him. They all like him, though. Mm, animals animals love him. Uh, I love him. Go ahead with the story, Chris. I mean, I give him a little squeeze on the butt cheek every now and then. <laughs> Ted just took what, a turn. I, I told you not to mention that on the podcast. Oh, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> so he would do things to just antagonize me all the time. He was always down on me, always criticizing me to other people. He just, he just, he didn't like me, which was fair because I didn't care for him either. But, I mean, after a while, you know, doing a good job and your boss is just shitting on me all the time, it just, you know, doesn't sit well. So I, I kept going, man, I, I'm, I, I've just about reached the limit with this fucking guy, you know? And uh, so I was, I was telling my buddy Ashton about it. I was like, yeah, this fucking guy, I don't know how much more this guy can take. And he was like, well, I, I said, I'm, I think I'm fixing to just quit. And uh, when I quit, I'm going to tell him to get fucked. And so uh, Ashton said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, if you quit in an epic way and tell him to get fucked in front of a whole bunch of people, I'll pay you $600. So I was like, sold. Actually, he was say less. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, if this guy fucks with me one more time, that's it. I'm out. I quit. So I'm sitting up. I'm posted up. In the hallway, <clears throat> as you have to do as a bellman, you know, greeting people. And uh, you could see all the way down the hall. It was a long view all the way down the hall. And I could see the guy at the hall. And he was walking toward the elevator. Well, he looked over and he saw me standing there. And he stopped, changed his path, and started heading toward me. So I turned to my buddies and I said, oh, I'm about to get fired, y'all. So they knew the plan. So they, Why? Why were you about to get fired? Because I knew he was coming. Because right? I knew he was coming to screw with me. Oh, just so, for fun? Just yeah. for funsies? Well, because apparently he wasn't going to say I quit. He was going to say I was, get fucked. Yeah, I was, wait, I, was wait, oh, just wait. I was waiting for oh, the guy. Just I was wait. waiting for the guy to instigate the the uh, you know the okay. situation. So you knew he was coming to take your balls. Yeah. So sure oh. enough, here he comes. Starts screwing with me. So I just 
I just didn't say anything to him, right? So he started, whoa, wait, stop. Backed up, he's like, yeah, speaking to you. Nodded my head. I'm thinking to myself, don't do it, buddy. Don't, you know, I'm giving you a chance. Walk off, right? So, nope. He goes, hey, you going to say something? You can tell me hi or something? And I went, you know what? And now keep in mind, we're standing at the bell desk, which is right by the front desk. So there's a whole line of people checking into the hotel. There's, I don't know, there's like 20 people checking the hotel. You can say the casino. Plus all the employees. Because you don't work there anymore. So I'm standing there and uh, he's like, okay, he wants me to talk to him. So I went, you know what? You can get fucked and fuck this place. Fuck it all. So... <laughs> So you know, I lifted up my leg and I did the whole, I did the whole thing, right? I, you could just hear the crowd of people turn their heads at one time. He didn't know what to do, so he was like, "Let's go." I was like, "Yep, let's go." So you left out the part where you threw your badge. Well, yeah, I threw my badge at him. So he walks, he escorts me out, and uh, get on the phone, call my wife, tell her I quit, and then I text my buddy Ashton, tells me only six hundred dollars, which, believe it or not, he paid me. Wow. Because <laughs> he's a he's and a stand up guy. Have to record it. No, I didn't. No. Oh no, there were witnesses. Record. I didn't record, but there was there a lot were... of people there. Supposedly, they still talk about it to this day. That's all. Awesome. So yeah. There were very so. many witnesses. So just because he didn't, he, he wanted to talk to you, and he wanted you to talk back to him, you wasn't having it, so you just told yeah. him, you know, get yeah. on by the way. Yeah. I'm imagining that that was the needle that struck, right. that broke the camel's yeah. back because it doesn't sound like it's that serious to me. Well. It was months. Yeah, it was a long time. It has to be of, the needle. Yeah. He, how, just, long, yeah. how long did you work there? Oh, too long. That's not the word. Too long. Straw. straw. So, straw. yeah, the straw. Straw to broke camera. Yeah. We already know that I'm not real good at those types of references and things. Yeah, that would be the dog. <clears throat> nope, we're not. We're, uh... <laughs> Do not talk about production. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> so, the reason why I'm bringing up jobs and all that kind of stuff is that a friend of ours that we uh, became friends with uh, playing WoW back in the olden days. Remember those days? World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, she helped not. me beat Hogger. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we've been friends with her ever West since. Westfall. Believe it or not. Nice. So, That's awesome. All right. So oh. she works uh, for one of the car manufacturers. Uh, I guess it's what, Stellantis? Yeah, now? it's yeah, Stellantis. Chrysler got bought out by a company called Stellantis, so now they're Stellantis. Okay, I didn't know that. So, of course, because she... Uh, you know, works for a car manufacturer. She's a member of the United Auto Workers Union, you know. Um, so go ahead and take it away, Angie, because oh. I know you talked to her today. I did. Um, so she works for the Local 12 in Toledo, Ohio, um, which was one of the ones that they called upon to strike first whenever they said, if they don't meet our, um, our demands by midnight, you walk out, you walk out, and you walk out. He named them by, you know, um, so she said that they're in for the long call. They're ready. They're, they're there to do it. Um, Sarah said that she, that they're taking care of them. There's an $850 million, um, strike, like, fund. Budget. Yeah, fund, a fund. Yeah. So she said the biggest thing that they want is they want their fair wage. And they said the CEO made $22 million last year. Wow. For that, and they made profits in the trillions over the past ten years, and they need to take care of their employees and workers the way they took care of them during the bailout, and how they let them cut their hours during COVID, and everything, and how they're always there and they're the ones that get fucked. Right. Um. So just a couple st things that happened. The guy's name is Sean Fain. He's the new UAW president. Um. He said, rather than doing a strike all at once, they're doing what's called a stand-up strike. Which means certain groups go on strike at certain times to keep the big three guessing which one's going to strike next. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So, the one Sarah works at is the Local 12 Region B um, in Toledo, Ohio Assembly Complex. She personally works for um, for the line that, does assume, uh, that assembles Jeep Wranglers. And they also do Jeep, um, what is it, um... Not Patriots. Yeah, I think it's Patriots. Um, so, um, they were called to stand up and walk out at 12 a.m. Um, but, the thing is, the UAW president said, if you're not called to strike, stay at work. Mm -hmm. um, even though your contract has expired with no extension, most of your contract is still in effect. And managers cannot change 
any of the terms and conditions of their work of their workplace. You are not an at will employee. And that means they can't be fired or displaced for no reason. Okay. Um so they can only be fired for cause is what they're saying. Correct. Okay. Um and so the auto um st- um this year Ford did an auto um stock buyback was five million dollars just this year they've done in stock buybacks and what a stock buyback um is it's a form of buying a company stock to falsely inflate the price of it Uh. yeah um and the entire cost of a car that you're that you buy labor only affects about five percent of that and they're asking for forty percent they were originally asking for fifty then they moved it down there to was 40. It, was it 50? Yeah, they okay. originally asked for 50. Well, to well be, that's what they that's what they were saying. Was they everybody saying they originally asked for 50? It's not being I don't, confirmed. I don't, yeah, okay, I don't know about that. Okay. 50% okay. raise. Well, he's about to. Okay, I, I'll break it down a little. But the reason why <clears throat> they're asking for 40% pay raise, and it's over uh, the next four years. It's not, you know, an immediate 40% pay raise. I think it's a 40% pay raise over the next four years. I think it's how it plays out. But the reason why they're asking specifically for a 40% pay raise is because the CEOs over the last four years have given themselves a 40% pay raise. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, the three the three CEOs, uh, one of them's making like $28 million a year, the other's making 22 You know, I mean, they're, they're all making $20 million a year. So the workers are saying, hey, this is not fair. We took benefit cuts and pay cuts whenever you guys needed to get bailed out and you know whenever covid you everybody was struggling we cut back to help you guys stay in business and now that you're making record profits we're not seeing any of it right you know and and they were you know they're doing things like uh bringing in temporary workers and stuff like that sort of you know to use as leverage against full-time employees you know you know how they play those games so uh, to be honest with you if say 10 years ago you had told me that auto workers want to strike, I'd have been like, I don't give a shit. You know, fuck those guys. They're making $30 an hour. I don't care about those guys. But that's not really how it is now. That, that In fact, that's not how it is now. You know, some of those guys are only making $16 an hour, mm-hmm. you know. And, I mean, like, they were saying, like, they were making them, you know, work on their lunch break, you know, stuff that you wouldn't expect people who are in a union to. I mean, I, I wouldn't think that they would be making as little as $16 an hour. Also, no. at a major car manufacturer, no. there's also, no way. Also, new employees were working sometimes three weeks straight before they were having a day off. Yeah, and, and which you know, is crazy to me. The other thing is like they were doing a thing where uh, people were, you know, a bunch of people would be doing the exact same job, and depending on I guess how management felt about you or whatever, you could be getting paid way more than the person next to you. You know, it, it didn't have nothing to do with say, oh, I've been working at this plant for 15 years, so I get paid more to do this job than you because I've gotten raises and stuff like that. No, it doesn't work that way. They were just paying people, you know, different amounts of money depending on how they felt about them, I guess. I don't really know how it paid out, but, you know, it was unfair that people were getting paid such vastly different amounts of money to do the exact same job, right? Which, that's fair. I mean, I I would be pissed off about that, too, if I've been working at a plant for 10 years and somebody sitting next to me is getting paid more than me. Right. That's only been working there two months or something. You know what I mean? Sure. I'd be pissed off about that, too. So, I mean, the stuff that they're fighting for, I I, I mean, I'm totally I'm totally on board with this strike. I really am. Yeah. You know, and uh, because let's be honest, there is a war going on right now between all employers and all employees, no matter what the job is. There's a war going on. And if we lose this war, we are going to be screwed. I mean, if you think your boss treated you bad before this happened i'm talking i'm talking about this economy and you know the the greed that's happening from inflation and bosses jacking up prices and and just not paying their workers a living wage i mean if you thought things were bad before this just imagine if we lose this fight right how bad things will be from now on i mean because if we lose if the average worker loses out you know because i mean a lot of people you know the ups guys you know were threatening to go on strike you know i mean let's not talk about the writers and the, and the actors we're not gonna we're not gonna include them in this but i'm just saying i mean there is a there is a serious problem in this country with company greed corporate greed whether I, let oh, me i want to interrupt yeah right yeah here. go ahead go ahead i know is reagan you're a server i was a server for the longest time it's ridiculous that a server only makes 213 an hour it's fucking ridiculous now i know you probably make more working where you work but 
most servers do only make two thirteen an hour. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I get why it started like that because the government said if you can't make enough tips or you're making more than minimum wage, you shouldn't be a server. But in today's age, people just are not tipping. Correct. Like they should. Correct. Uh, and I'm, I'm not asking for over tipping. I'm asking for the minimum percentage that you should tip. They're not doing that. Correct. But here's the problem with that, though, is that the whole reason that that process began is because employers wanted to pass the cost of labor on to the consumer. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I own a restaurant, and I don't want to pay my staff. So I'm going to get the people that tip them to pay their salary, and then I'm going to pay them less than I have to by saving that money. Right. So the cost of their labor is now passed on to the consumer. Right. And that never should have started in the first place. Never. Why does a consumer have to pay for labor when they're already paying for all of the services that they receive in that place? There's already a price increase on everything that they buy in the place. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I understand. It's, and no other, you don't go to uh, a convenience store and go in the 7-Eleven and pick up a Slurpee and have to pay the man behind the counter that rings you up. Oh, you might have you know to now because <laughs> they're asking for tips at like Starbucks and places. Well, yeah. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, understand, understand that no. nowhere does the government no. subsidize that. That's nowhere correct. Nowhere does I, the government I, say, I, right. Yeah. It's okay for you to not pay this guy because we're going to expect mm. the person that walks in and buys the Slurpee to pay him. Every job yeah. should, every place should be required to pay their employees whatever the minimum wage Absolutely. is. No matter Absolutely. what, whether Regardless you get tipped whether, or not. Whether yep. they're a tipped employee or not. Right. That's correct. So If they are a tipped employee, then good for them. Right. No. That's supposed to be a bonus for doing a good a job. Bonus. Yep. Correct. The consumer, the person who... You know, appreciates the extra attention to detail that they get yes. from that person. Yes. Yes. It's not supposed to be a subsidization of the salary that the employer doesn't want to pay. Well, especially I think that's a bunch since of you're not guaranteed to even make minimum wage with your tips. Right. Yeah, that's a bunch of crap. But you know, this United Auto Workers thing is not is not new. No. It's a, it's been going on for a while, way mm-hmm. back with Barack Obama. He had to do a auto workers. Uh, in bailout, where right? They paid them a whole bunch of money so that the strike could not not go forward. Mm-hmm. And all that other. Well, we, a government. well, we bailed them out because they're running their companies like shit, right? Which I think is another garbage move. Yep. No, I I agree. I mean, I I, I am wholeheartedly on board with this strike. I really am. I'm totally on board because you know what happens at this strike. The, the result of this strike is really going to tell us a lot about how the future of corporations are going to go. I, I think, you know, I mean, and the stuff they're asking for, I do not think is unfair at all. You know, I mean, there, this trend of. Um, so tell me again about a forty percent raise because that sounds okay. like an awfully so, large ass number. So over the past four years, the CEOs of the top three auto manufacturers gave themselves. A forty percent pay increase, so they're all making within twenty. You know, one of them might be making nineteen million dollars, one of them's making twenty-two, one of them's making twenty-eight, something like that. They're all making basically twenty million dollars or more. Right. So a as year. What you're saying is, as of today's date, yes. Go back four years from today's date, they mm-hmm. were making forty percent less than they are now. Right. But are are the auto workers unions asking for that forty percent all on the drop? I don't think they are. I think they want it phased in over the next four years. They yeah. also want their benefits back, and yeah. they also want to be able to um, have their um, options that they gave up. Yeah, whenever we bailed them out, they, in order to help the car manufacturers stay in business, they cut back on their benefits and pensions and stuff so that, the car, so that while we were bailing them out, they wouldn't have to expend so much money. So they, so they had to get punished so that the jackasses who caused the problem could keep on doing what they were doing, basically, you know, and then they rewarded themselves with even more money, you know, which I'm, I'm, I'm not for bailing out any company, to be honest with you. If you run your company in the ground, that's your Too fault. Bad. Yep, exactly. And that's the way it should be. Right. So, I, you know, I, the, the greed, the corporate greed is so just off the chart right now that, you know, this strike, if this strike is successful, which there's a good chance it will be because they're going about it the right way. 
you know. They haven't uh, hit the they haven't hit the heavy hitter vehicles. Yet. Yeah, they 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 are going about it the right way, um, and they can continue to put the pressure on them. So you know that haven't. I mean, they can step it up if they need to. So I mean, this is just the beginning of it. But I, I this is something to watch because if they pull this off, then I think this is going to be beneficial to other, you know, other employees and other you know working for other companies. You know, so I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But but um, I'm I'm one hundred percent behind them. That's for sure. Okay. I like it. Yep. Also, I, I asked Sarah if there were any uh, managers or anything in particular <laughs> that she wanted me to tell to get fucked on the podcast, but she wouldn't give me any names. No names? No, she wouldn't do it. No names. She said, so. I love y'all, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just saying. It, she likes her job. I put it out there. Yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, speaking of. So, there was a woman. Um, hey, wait. Before you get started on that, yep. I just want to go on record saying I love my employer. My employer loves me. We have a relationship that works so well together and I've been there for 16 years and it's the greatest place I've ever worked in my life. I've never worked at any other place better. Well, good for you. I think I, think yep. I covered it. No, yeah, good. sounds good to me. You got a little something <laughs> on your nose. Sounds yeah, good to me. Sounds good to me. Good. Okay, okay, good. I should be able to keep my job now. <laughs> so before we stop talking about this, there's just, uh, what was the name of the guy? There was a guy interviewing. Oh, yes, there Jordan was, Sinclair. Jordan Sinclair was interviewing people today <clears throat> from breaking points that were striking people that are striking okay he was, he was interviewing people and he interviewed this woman whose name i do not know uh you were wearing a bleep uh blue t-shirt that said do i look like a fucking people person so i don't know who that woman is but i just want you to know i feel a connection with you right you know what i mean like we if you're listening you moment. yeah right now yeah. exactly i am 100 percent on board with you baby right. so <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't feel like she listens to podcasts. Uh, well, she think, might. You, she, never yeah, you don't know. You don't know who listens to this podcast. Internet. Yeah. She's this not a internet. people person. We are people. We're, we're worldwide. We are global. We are, we are global, man. actually. We are global. global. I just have a feeling she goes home to pets and she likes the silence. Hmm. Maybe. She might listen to podcasts with I mean, her maybe. pets. I'm just saying. Don't maybe. hold your breath. Don't ruin the moment. We had a connection. Don't ruin it. Yeah, you don't know. You have no idea. <laughs> but if anybody knows her... Y'all get in touch with That's us. Right. And, you know. She works at the Ford plant, by the way. She works at the Ford plant, and she has a blue T-shirt on that says something about not being a people person. Right. Right. Missed, what do they call that when you have those? They have like a newspaper section for that. Missed. Connections? Yeah, missed connections. That's it. <laughs> that was you. You just had a missed connection with Jordan Sinclair's interviewee. Right? Yep, that's it. I love it. That's it. I love it. I'm excited. She should be excited too. Why don't, where can we get the T-shirt? That's a good question, uh, Miss. If uh, you're listening to this podcast, please let us know. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Reagan can find please it. Drop a comment <laughs> and tell us where you got your T-shirt. At. It's great. So we have a choice. We can either uh, I can either do the movie suggestion, or uh, you can talk about your topic or save it for the next uh, next episode. Up to you. I think we should up, do both. Up to you, Reagan. I think we should up do to both. you, Reagan. We're at that time. It's up to you. There is no time. Well, no, there's no time, but I'm just saying. I mean, it's up to you. Why are you rushing? Don't be rushing, people. Duh. Ooh, Angie. Duh. That is balls in your throat today? Look, he's been hyper all night, and y'all are witnesses to this. He has been hyper. Listen, I like he was, it, when he we was come jacked back, up and excited. When we come back to record the next episode, she has a black eye. It's because she walked into a door, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're right. She fell down the steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault. You want to place bets on which one will come back here with a black eye? It's It'll be Chris. <laughs> I got a pretty good arm. Okay, so um, I found the story about this 11-year-old kid. Um, his mom is trying to get it all out on social media, even though this happened several years ago. It happened in the UK. Um, the UK's version of merry-go-rounds is called Roundabout. And they're smaller than what our merry-go-rounds would be. And they're mostly like seats as opposed to ours where you stood up and just held onto a pole. There's, it's, We're talking about playground equipment. Right, playground right. equipment. Okay. So they, theirs is mostly with seats. Some of them are pretty small. But they started posting videos on YouTube of spinning people as fast as they could. Some people would pass out. Uh, some people would fly out. Um, 
And then people decided to take it to the next level. Good Jesus and mercy. By using a motorcycle or a moped tire to spin the roundabout. So. Just the tire? Or. Like they turn it on. Connected to the engine of the motorcycle. No, like they turn it on its side and the, the wheel would be pressed against the roundabout to spin it. So while it was, they're revving it up. Oh, yeah. So the yeah. tire is connected to the motorcycle. Yes. It's yeah, not yeah. just the tire. No, no. They're not like, just walking around with a tire. <laughs> going, Here, let me push you with this tire. Right? Right. Okay. Right. Okay, so it's connected to an engine. Yeah. Okay, I'm with it. I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Sound right. effects. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this 11-year-old was at the park, and uh, these 17-year-old kids came up to him and dared him to do it, and of course... You know, he wants to look brave. Oh, yeah. Probably call him a chicken. He says, you know, yeah, I'll do it. Well, they spun him so fast that he flew off the thing (laughs) and was unconscious. So they left. They bailed. Another kid comes up and sees him and immediately goes for help. His mom described him as looking like an alien when she saw him. Oh, your people. He spent months in a hospital. (laughs) Because his eyes were swollen, the doctors had to research his condition before they could treat him because they weren't sure exactly how to go about it. They said they think he had um, experienced G-forces that only astronauts and jet fighter pilots experience. On a merry-go-round. I mean, you can... Powered by a motorcycle. All you have to do is look up... um, (coughs) Roundabout videos on YouTube. It's Roundabout nuts. Roundabout videos on YouTube. I'm telling you, That's it's nuts. That's crazy. It okay. is. It is. It is crazy. So and is this a like a TikTok challenge that they're doing where they're recording it for social media? It's YouTube. I don't think they have any like that have been done recently. But the mom of this kid is trying to get it out, and she even posts a video of the kid being thrown from the thing. And she, then she posts pictures of how he looked at the time and a few updates after it happened. Um, just to try to warn parents, you need to watch your kids with these challenges. You need to teach them that they don't have to be brave. They need to be smart. But, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. You can just look up Roundabout of Death. Roundabout of Death. On you. Wow. Well. Uh, I know yeah. this, might, this might come as a surprise coming from me, but uh, well, I, like I, I don't feel a lot of sympathy for uh, morons who right. do things like that. He was a kid. Man. I don't care. At 11 years old, you should have enough self-awareness to know that a motorcycle and a roundabout don't go together. That's right. Nothing good is going to come of that. <coughs> God bless Sorry, you. excuse me. That's all right. Bless you. You can't control yeah. those things, you know? No, I know. Those I shit know. just happens. No, I know. I know. You know? You can't just be like, uh-uh, nope, not sneezing today. Well, I'd rather you sneeze <laughs> on the podcast than shit. Oh, who shit did you? You just said shit happens. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> but no, Chris, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Ignorance, we, we, this is the thing that we call Darwinism. Right? No, we, right? you're right. We've discussed this we before. We remove all that, of the yep. warning labels and let Darwinism Th- That's right. Effect. That's right. Yep. I mean... I don't know. I just can't feel sorry for those people. I just, I just cannot do it. I tried, and I can't do it. I don't think an eleven-year-old a little bit. is able to comprehend <laughs> how fast that motorcycle wheel was going to spin that thing if he had never seen the challenge. Why does an eleven-year-old have a motorcycle? He didn't. The boys went up and coerced him into doing it. Those are the ones that are the problem. Okay. Right? Yes. Yes. Those were definitely the ones that were the problem. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, then I, we're in agreement with that. But I didn't want you blaming that eleven-year-old kid. He's paying. Well, I mean, we can blame them all. We can blame that 11-year-old kid and the older kids. Oh, my God. I'm just saying we can blame them all, and I will. You ever did nothing that you didn't want to do when you was a kid just because somebody called you chicken? No, no, no. Or peer pressure of any kind? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I didn't do anything that made me look like an alien when I was done. (laughs) Oh, my God. I don't think you, if he had not seen the challenge, I don't know if he had or not, but if he had not, I don't think he could comprehend the outcome because like even when I was describing it to you, I don't think you really got what was going on. 
But when you see the video, you're like, oh my god! Like people are passing out and stuff, yep. flying out and well, yeah, it's. Crazy. I remember getting almost killed by a merry-go-round when I was young. Make it go as fast as we could do, and then sure. try to yeah, jump. Yeah, everybody on it. did that. Everybody did that. But then you're yeah, an idiot. Absolutely. Am I? Because I don't look like an alien. You see what I'm saying? I didn't. You didn't look like an alien anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he looks currently like an alien. Well, Just at the moment, his skin turned green because the blood <laughs> had rushed completely out of his brain. So yeah, he looked a little bit like an alien because of his condition at the moment. Surely, after the blood refreshed his capillaries, he became whole again and no longer looks like. E.T. All right, all right, well. I, I mean, that's me just making a guess. No, okay, I mean, that's possible. Dang. Jeez, the That, least. or is it possible that when he was knocked unconscious, uh, his alien brain couldn't keep up the metamorphosis, the disguise oh of a human God. being? Oh, my God. I'm possible. just saying, are we going, I mean. Once a, you lose consciousness, then you can no longer use your cloaking device right. to look like a human right. being, and you actually are an alien. Right. Reagan, yeah, this you is, would think aliens would be able to handle G-forces. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. I'm just saying. We're in a rabbit hole right here. Can we stop yeah. saying I'm just saying? Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I can stop. Oh, okay, I did. I Way to think about it. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and wrap up the roundabout, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the final segment. Final uh, segment. Movie time, yes, sir. Yeah, but the good news is that it's the month of October. We told our listeners last time what you yep. do in the month of October. Yep. A new movie every night. A new movie every night, yeah. So yep. we get to get a Halloween movie at least, or some sort of scary-ish movie yep. for the Halloween season. Right. So it can't be terrible, can it? Oh, yeah. Every oh, yeah. horror movie he has ever recommended to me has stuck. Yeah. Not every. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't watch this. Okay. Everybody out there, watch this except for you. We've okay. probably already seen it. So, well, she has. Yeah. So for those that uh, didn't listen last week, shame on you. Um, every day, every night in the month of October, I will uh, post a different horror movie on our Facebook page for Mike Up or Shut Up. I've been doing it since 2014. I, you know, every year I mix it up, throw a few movies in there that I hadn't shown before, or whatnot. Um. So you can go to our page every day, and I'll have a new movie to watch that night. So you have 31 Actually, nights of 36. horror movies. 31 nights of horror movies. 36. 36. Oh, yeah, because uh, you get four additional movies on. Five. We're gonna, oh, yeah, that's right. This month we get five. Jesus. Math is hard. Man, I, I don't like this getting corrected, woman. But that's <laughs> well, do it right the first time, right. and I wouldn't have to correct Oh. You. Not the first time I've heard that. I don't know what kind of alien tell. calendar so, y'all are using. So, uh, no, they're, 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 no, no, what she's saying is... uh. I'm going to recommend extra movies this month. So He's they, they'll get the movies that they're going to... Uh, actually, there's going to be 32 movies on the list this year because I'm going to do a double feature oh, on last night. Say. So then there'll be five additional horror movies because uh, that aren't on the list that I will recommend. On so each he's going to do one episode. every podcast. So there's five weekends this month. Day. So that's... So that, yeah. So 32 movies to watch in the month of October plus five extra movies that I will recommend that won't be on the list to watch. You don't have to know the recommendation. Okay. All right. so, you got it. Okay, so the first recommendation is a movie that came out in 1999. The movie is called Ravenous. Ravenous, starring Guy Pierce, Robert Carlyle, David Arquette, Jeremy Davies, Jeffrey Jones, and I think Neil McDonough. I, mean, I don't know. I, I can't I've remember never now. Really but, watched it. But uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. So uh, the movie takes place back in the day during the Mexican American War. There's a captain, guy played by Guy Pierce, <clears throat> who was a coward. And through circumstance in this battle, uh, he actually ends up capturing a bunch of people, and it makes him look like he's a hero. So, you know, he gets promoted for, you know, pulling off this feat, and uh, one of his superiors realizes that there's just a misunderstanding of circumstance, and a guy really doesn't deserve to be promoted because he's not really a brave soldier. So what he does is, to save face, he sends him off because, you know, he, he, the guy just got promoted, so he can't really do anything against him. So what he does is he ships him off to this uh, fort <clears throat> out in the middle of nowhere where they send just basically a bunch of military fuck-ups. So he's like, I'll just get rid of this guy so I don't have to worry about him. So he sends him to this fort. So God Pierce is here at this fort with a bunch of other soldiers and, like, a couple of Indian guides. And... Uh, 
just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere, you know, just doing their own thing. And then this uh, person shows up. It's wintertime. This person shows up, got frostbite, barely alive. They take him, they, you know, revive him. And he tells the story that him, he was with this uh, party of settlers traveling and uh, they got stranded and uh, had to resort to cannibalism. One of the, one of the members started murdering people uh, and eating them because they didn't have any food. He managed to escape. And so he said, you know, when I left, there was still a couple of women still alive. And so we need to go back, send a search party back there. Maybe we can save them. Maybe we get there in time before he kills everybody. So that's, so the movie's about them uh, rounding up the search party and going to find these other people and, uh, you know, see if they can rescue them. And what happens is quite interesting. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a movie by cannibalism, but it's not a movie like, say, Cannibal uh, Holocaust, which is, you know, the kind of movie where they just want to kind of gross you out. You know, show you shocking things. It's not that. It's, I mean, yeah, there's there's gore and blood and people get killed and stuff, but it's not, it's not the kind of your tip. It's your typical kind of slasher type of horror blood you would see. You know what I mean? It's not like gory scenes of people eating flesh and stuff. It's not that. And it has a very interesting concept for cannibalism about why somebody would want to become a cannibal and what it does to them. I'm not gonna say what it is because you got to watch the movie to find out. But it's but it's actually a very interesting story. And it's told in a fun way. Was it based on the Donner Party? No, not really. I mean, maybe they might have really? inspired. Yeah, but it's not. It's not a Donner Party type deal. It's yeah. It's uh. I watched a little bit of it and I was like, nope, I'm out. It's pretty good. No, I enjoy it. It's pretty good. It, it's it's uh you know it's got moments you know fighting and, and people you know but it, but it, it kind of has a fun feel to it if that makes sense. You know the music for it is is kind of quirky and I, I don't know it's it's a fun it's a time. Feel good cannibal. No, yeah, right. It's right. Right. It's funny. Yeah, right. It's your feel good cannibal. Cannibal. That's it. Up. Yep. No, I love it. No, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's different. Uh, that's what I like about From it. Roger and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you're not a regular listener, you don't get that. You don't get that inside joke. That's why right? you should go back and listen. <laughs> that's right. We got oh. all kinds what, of what, what was your things. recommendation about uh, listening? You said you were going to recommend something tonight. What? Oh, you forgot. Oh. oh. Well, we. I like to go back in, on Spotify, and you can actually change the speed of the podcast to listen to it faster or slower. So I was listening and I said, let me speed this up a little bit and put it on 1.5 times speed. And it's, if you imagine playing a, a 45 record at like, or a 33 member back, well, nobody knows what albums and records. Not today, not anymore. today. Only people out Oh no, hipsters do. You think so? Yeah. Albums, when you speed up yep. the speed, it sounds kind of like, like a chipmunk. Yeah. So I sped it up to two times speed, and it was the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. So I highly recommend that if you're using Spotify, go listen to the podcast episodes at two times speed. Yeah, I, I think you I know. did it at one one point six five speed. Was I think two 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 times might was a little bit too it fast. It is a little too fast. But but, to but one words. one point six five I think was the optimal speed. But right. yeah, it's a lot. It is hilarious. It is, it is it, a lot of fun. Yeah, it kicks the humor up yeah. One, yeah. another notch. Yeah, it takes it to the next level. Right. So, so check that out if y'all get the opportunity. To that's do. it. And uh, I guess uh, that'll be it for this episode. We'll uh, hopefully see you next week. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoy the movies I uh, will be posting up. Tonight's the first night. And of course, the first movie of every year is always Jaws. So tonight's movie is Jaws. But you'll have to check in on the Facebook page every day to see what the next movie is. All right. So we'll see y'all right. next week, right? We're out. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>